Hello, this is Beginning Engineers. Today I'm going to be talking about welding. What is welding exactly? Welding is the process, whether it's fabrication or sculptural, of bringing two metals together through fusion. The base material is generally welded as well. That means it's melted. Unlike brazing or soldering, filler is generally used. And oftentimes the weld is stronger than the materials themselves. So the materials will break when force is applied before the weld would. In America, it's governed and standardized by the American Welding Society. So now that we know what welding is, what are the types of things that get welded? Well, shape-wise, there's different types of joints. And a joint is when you bring two materials together in a certain position to be welded. You have a square butt joint. That's when two pieces come face to face. It's a funny name, but it's very widely used in industry. You have a V-butt joint, similar to a butt joint, but there's an angle on each shape. Kind of makes a V shape. You have a lap joint. That's when two materials overlap. You have a T joint. Again, that looks like a T. There's overlap as well, but it's different than a lap joint. The two materials are perpendicular to one another. You have an L joint, which is also known as a corner joint. And then you have an edge joint. That's when two materials, similar to a lap joint, but are completely on top of each other, and you're welding the edge of them. Now that we've broken down the type of joints that get welded, let's break down a type of weld itself. So this is going to be parts of a fillet weld. And I'm assuming it's pronounced fillet instead of fillet. It's funny because I have worked with this type of weld in industry, but I've never heard it actually pronounced. Okay, so breaking down the parts of this weld, and this carries over to other types of welds as well. You have the leg of the weld, which is the length of the weld, from the material welded to the outermost point. You have the root of the weld, that is the deepest penetration in the material being welded. So how far down does the weld go? You have the face of the weld, that's the outer surface of the weld. It's an indicator of a good weld quality. So just looking at the face, you can see different patterns and you can tell if the weld was performed by someone more experienced or someone less experienced. You have the toe, which is the point on each end of the face of the weld where it touches the material. So the point ends of the face of the weld. You have the throat, which is the distance from the face of the weld to the root. The general rule of thumb here is that the throat of the weld should be as thick as the material welded. Uh, the dotted line in the picture isn't quite correct. The dotted line would go all the way from three down to two. Now in practice, welds are cut and examined under a microscope to get these dimensions. And I've done this before. I helped write operation standards for how to audit this process and see if the specs were conforming. I would like to go briefly into how you draw a weld on an actual part drawing. Now we've gone over type of joints that would get welded and some specifics of an actual weld itself. But how would you draw a weld on a print? Well, there are a variety of symbols for types of weld, weld location, and weld length. The arrow, based on where the arrow is placed, it can say weld on this side of the object, weld on the other side. Certain symbols can mean you need a fillet weld, an edge weld, or a stud weld, or many other types of weld. Even more specifically, the weld drawing can say, how do you finish the weld? How do you contour? What's the groove weld size? What's the actual process to make the weld? What does the tail look like? There's a lot of specifics with welding, so a drawing can really tell a lot of information. So what are some actual types of welding? Well, here are some of the main types. There's gas metal arc welding, which is also known as MIG, metal inert gas welding. Pretty much with MIG, you have a wire and you feed it at an adjustable rate the weld is protected as well with a mixture of argon and CO2. The wire feed rate greatly varies how you work. This is the only type of welding I ever did in real life. I didn't do a whole lot of it, but I know if you were working on a more specific project where you needed a lot of accuracy, you would feed the wire slow. 
If you're trying to do something more rapidly, you adjust the rate and feed the wire quickly. It kind of controls how quickly you weld. On the other side, there is gas tungsten arc welding, also known as TIG, tungsten inert gas. TIG uses a non-consumable tungsten electrode to weld, as opposed to MIG, which consumes the electrode. It too uses a shielding gas, although it's either helium or argon. Now both those types of welding require a flow of electricity, so when you're working on a piece you must clamp a wire to the piece or the area being worked on. You need a flow of electricity. Now speaking just directly with electricity, there is resistance welding, which is also known as spot welding. It involves two thin metals being welded together in a very tiny area by passing extremely high current through them. You're talking thousands of amps. That picture on the bottom shows a spot welder, so a very tiny area, but a very high current. It's a very effective way to weld. Then, there is laser beam and electron beam welding. These are fun to mention because they're newer technologies. They have high startup costs, but they're extremely efficient because the weld areas are very controlled, and they're very useful for high production applications. I believe at this point you have a good overview of welding, so I will end it on some fun welding facts. The arc of a MIG weld can be between 3,000 and 20,000 degrees Celsius. So the visible surface of the sun is 5,500 degrees Celsius. So some welding is actually hotter than the visible surface of the sun. Pretty crazy. Another fun fact, if two uncoated materials touch in space, they will weld together because there is no atmosphere to oxidize the materials and prevent welding from occurring. This makes sense because this is why we shield many welds here on Earth, to prevent this oxidation. Also, a more practical example, underwater welders can earn between $100,000 and $200,000 a year without having a formal college degree. You do need certificates and a decent amount of experience, but welding is one of the few fields left where it's more skills-based and less about education. And my last fun fact, a NASCAR race car typically requires around 950 hours of welding before it can race. That is a lot of labor hours. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you've learned a lot about types of welding, types of welds, types of joints, and just general facts about welding. If you liked the video, please subscribe. I'm trying to do a few of these a week. Thanks for watching.